about candidate behaviour, about standards in public life and about anti-Semitism. Um, Matt, listening to that bold claim from Jeremy Corbyn, what did you make? Well, I think Simon was right at the beginning of the programme and he said that there was a definite shift in Jeremy Corbyn's position. He, he was much less sort of equivocal and, uh, well, you know, I condemn all forms of racism and all that. I mean, for me, it is still shocking that the Labour Party, after all this time, I and mean, he's been leader now for four years, the Labour Party still has this um, problem. The man who could be Prime Minister in a few weeks still has this problem with anti-Semitism. Anne? Well, I mean... Uh, it He has a problem. Of course, there are people within the Labour Party. I mean, I'm, I don't know about this very much, but uh, who, who are anti-Semitic and racist. I mean, it's a really big problem in our society. Our society is deeply racist and eradicating that, I think, is a major job. Um, but I do think he could have been tougher earlier and more explicit because he, as a person, is very, very clear about these issues and his his own conduct has been and his own anti his fight against him anti Semitism is long standing I and mean, that hasn't come through. Well, hang on. There, I mean, too, there are lots of examples of him. Too reluctant to there are lots fight of examples this, of him. Uh, spending time with people who are anti-Semitic, of saying things which have offended the oh, Jewish community. I think that's all really exaggerated, and it's actually bizarre given the, given his standing. Given, well, given his... The, he keeps saying he's anti he's anti-racist, and then keeps um, being accused of being uh, anti-Semitic by the Jewish community. Well, yes, and there are people there, and it ha it's all wrapped up with Israel. And I don't want to get into that because this is not politics that I understand. But it's all wrapped up with the debates around Palestine and so on. And and I think therefore it's all rather poisonous actually. But difficult for uh, the Labour Party itself at the time of the election. Yes, I mean Corbyn has a record of being on platforms with sympathisers of some really very unpleasant organisations uh, and terrorist organisations who are openly anti-Semitic. Then of course he has a record of supporting the IRA in, in a time long before any peace agreements were made with the IRA. So he's, he's not very good at picking his friends. Uh, I, I, I do think that it's registered with him that he's caused a great deal of unhappiness and a great deal of um, of difficulty for his own party by this casual attitude. And as, as Matt says, you know, it's shocking to think we could have a prime minister in a month's time who uh, is is running or has allowed things that many of us thought died out in the 1940s to resurface in his party. I think it's shocking that we might have a prime minister uh, who who suffers whose party suffers from Islamophobia and whom Baroness Wolsey is for constantly haranguing for his failure to address the anti-Islamic phobia in, inside the Tory party. I mean, we've got there are t racists in throughout society and we have a prime minister who hasn't de dealt with it in his own party. Right, so we're going to leave it. Double standards here. We're going to leave that discussion for a moment and try and return to Kirsty Blackman 